Hello, everyone. So I'm finally here to give you a raspberry pizza and an extra New Jersey update on everything. So Rasputitsa was a couple of weekends ago now, um, end of April there. So that is a gravel ride in Vermont. It starts in Berg, Vermont. Um, maybe you know the Kingdom Trails Network, the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. That's where Rasputitsa takes place, but it is a gravel ride. They have various different distances. I did the 100K, which ended up being about 57 miles. And then I think my parents did a 24 mile route. Um, I think that was the 40K. And then there's one in between the 70K. Um, if you've read my post and kind of are in the cycling world, there was unfortunately a tragedy um, this day where a cyclist and a car collided. I am unsure of all the details on what the cyclist was doing, what the car was doing, so on and so forth. At this point to me, that is pretty irrelevant um, since the cyclist has unfortunately lost his life. Um, they had laid him to rest last weekend and I, I just get goosebumps thinking about it. So, you know, unfortunately that, that happened that day and um, it, it put a damper on some of the mood for sure. Um, vibes were just a little different on the finish line than I think I've heard in previous years. So there was that unfortunate incident. Um, again, I don't think I need to control this video about the, the incident. It, it was a little tough and, and something I dealt with for a few days. So I'm just going to move on and tell you about Rasputitsa and the event um, and why I think you should do it next year on a lighter note. So we'll put the tragedy aside. Um, I'm not ignoring it. Um, I just I don't want to continue to harp on it. Um, it was tough. So as far as Rasputitsa goes, if you've never been in the Northeast, King, Northeast Kingdom of Vermont, it is like the best place ever. It's so freaking cool. It's so much fun. It's beautiful. It's a small town just completely there for like biking. And they have Burke Mountain, which is skiing in the winter. But once the spring hits, it's like all bikes, everything. So it's a great area of Vermont. Um, if you're a cyclist and you have a gravel bike or a mountain bike and you haven't been Berg to Berg, Vermont, like you're missing out and you need to make it happen ASAP. So my parents and I went up on a Friday night. The event was Saturday. Um, Rasputitsa is all about a party. Like if you know anything about gravel, especially these bigger events like Rasputitsa was, um, it's a party. So we got there right at Packet Pickup um, Friday night, right when it opened there was bands playing, there was music, there was drinks, there was vendors, all sorts of good stuff. I visited my Bivo bottle folks. Some of you know Izzy. Um, I got a bottle with cows on it just to fit the state of Vermont. Um, so I got that and I got some Rasputitsa swag. If you hear a lawnmower, I'm sorry. I'm outside recording this because it's just so pretty out. Um, so there was tons of vendors walk around, which was really fun. Then we got in the packet pickup line. The line was like crazy long. <laughs> Maybe we should have done that first before we shopped. Um, but yeah, so that was Friday night. And then we opted to eat at a restaurant in town instead of at the restaurant there, the food trucks, um, just what we decided to do, but they had food trucks, there, music, whole, whole event. They had like photo booths, all sorts of stuff. It was super cool. Um, they also had a shakeout ride Friday night, which I was not able to attend because my dad and I had to work. <laughs> so, um, but they did, I think that was at like three o'clock. They had a couple like local pros, people big in the cycling world kind of lead that off. Um, so yeah, so it's, it was a cool day Friday. Then Saturday was the event. Um, so we kicked off at various times based on the distance. Um, we start at Burke mountain and off we went. I didn't know what to expect. Um, some of the gravel rides I have done in the past have been quite intense. Um, so I didn't know what to expect for this one. And I was there solo. So like I knew people doing the event, um, but I wasn't planning on like riding with anyone. So right away, I met a, met a stage one cycling teammate at the start. Um, and we kind of went back and forth the whole ride together. You know, I was better at the uphills. He was better at the downhills. Um, you know, so it was that was fun to hang out with him and meet his friend. And I met this awesome girl I rode with for quite some time. She's part of the hustle hive out of Boston and does a lot of like enduro downhill mountain biking. It was great to chat with her. So like always, I met some really cool people and I felt the whole course was very rideable. We got lucky. It was like a gorgeous day out. Um, 
I think it was one of those weeks where it was like raining all the time. And then it was Vermont at the end of April. Who knows what you're going to get? And it was like gorgeous and barely wet. <laughs> there was one section that was money downhill, kind of like a techie single track area. And I rode some of it and I walked some of it. There were some folks ahead of me walking. So instead of just like being annoying and causing a scene, I just hopped off and walked it. But other than that, everything was super rideable. Um, my ride was 57 miles and about 7,000 feet of climbing. So, you know, it had a good bit of climbing, but it, it again, it was all rideable. I've done a few events now where some of the stuff gets pretty rough. Um, but this, this wasn't that. There was one pretty punchy hill, I would say, but then the rest of the hills were kind of your typical Vermont hills. Um, but it was a beautiful ride. My parents loved their ride. Um, there were some gorgeous views. I probably should have stopped and took more pictures, but I was just kind of having fun and cruising along. I stopped at all the aid stations. The aid station at, at these events tend to be fun. One was like, I don't know if it was bourbon or whiskey and cookies. One was at a brewery. And so, you know, people have fun at these aid stations. Um, you stop, you get some food, you chat. Sometimes there's like local goods being made. So kind of fun stuff. And then I finished and my parents were at the finish line and, you know, there was music playing again and all sorts of stuff. And they had great post food. We had like these quinoa bowls and you got a beer that they brewed like for the event, which was really cool. Um, then we kind of went back to the, our little log cabin and got situated. And then, um, we went out, they had a little party that night. Unfortunately, it had started raining and it was outside and it was cold. So we went for a few minutes, had a drink, um, checked out the scene and then, um, went out to eat at another place just cause we were just cold and didn't want to stand out in the rain, but it seemed like that party went really fun if the weather held out. So I think Rasputitsa all in all, it's definitely one of the bigger gravel events in our area, meaning like it draws a big crowd. It draws some like kind of like famous folks in our graveling world. It's close enough to us if you're in Connecticut to drive to Vermont and get there. They have various distances. Um, there were some folks riding mountain bikes too. So I think that's like totally doable. Um, if you have a mountain bike and, and not necessarily a gravel bike, you can still participate. Um, it's a timed event. But at these gravel races, a lot of folks, you know, are, are there just to have fun and participate. They're not there to race. Um, personally, I was there just to have like a good hard ride. I wasn't trying to race or anything. I was chatting. I was stopping at aid stations, but I wanted just a day with like a solid effort and to experience one of the larger gravel events. Um, so totally you should put it on your calendars for next year. I highly, highly recommend follow their social media. It's I think Rasputitsa Dirt. They do a great job. They do a ton for the community. Um, they do a ton for inclusivity in cycling. Um, they're really, really great folks. So highly recommend. It's a great thing to support and get you out on your bike early in April or early in the season at the end of April. Okay. So that was Rasputitsa. Questions? Let me know. I'm here to chat about it more. I hope to see you there next year. I'm hoping to get there next year as long as scheduling allows. And then... Uh, a week later, I drove down to New Jersey with my parents to compete in Xterra, New Jersey. So Xterra is off-road triathlon, swimming, mountain biking, and trail running. Um, my goal with this was just to do an early season try before my 70.3s. I also got a new mountain bike fit because I am participating in a 50-mile mountain bike event and then a 12-hour mountain bike event later this summer slash fall. So I wanted to test out my new fit on the mountain bike and um, do some transitions in a, a race um, environment before my 70.3s. So it was close enough where we drove down um, that morning. Um, it was like two and a half hour drive with a nine o'clock race start. So we drove down I think we left our house at like five. So it wasn't like crazy. Maybe it was 4.30 we left. Um, I think it was between two and a half and three hours, depending on what map you looked at. But we left. We got there pretty much like at 7.15, um, got my packet and started getting set up for that. Um, as expected, early May, New Jersey, the water was absolutely freezing. So I highly recommend um, if you're doing these early season events and the water's cold and you're afraid to be cold before the start of the race and all this stuff, um, you need to get in the water. So I had prepared and I brought some towels in case it was a little chilly when I got out of the water. Luckily, it was one of these nice days where the weather was warming up quick, getting like leaps in my hair. 
Um, the weather was warming up quick, so I did get in the water. It was instantly cold. Very, very cold. I did some strokes. I was out of breath. <laughs> I was struggling to breathe. Um, but I, I just, I was talking to myself, you know, take a deep breath, relax, do some strokes, you'll settle into this. And sure enough, I did, you know, five, 10 minutes, you know, I was able to do a quick out and back to the first buoy. I felt good, normal stroke, um, but definitely needed to get into the water. Um, and definitely one of those races where like, they really encourage you to have a wetsuit and I would say it would have been pretty hard to participate without a wetsuit that's like definitely where wetsuits come in even though I always say like don't make a wetsuit be your like barrier to entry to triathlon you know I think there are a handful of races where like it really is just a necessity and I think this is one of them so for the swim this is common in Xterra it's two loops and you do some kind of like beach running in between I think they call it an Aussie exit um so you started running down the beach like a couple hundred yards he did like a 500 meter loop ran the beach again another 500 meter loop swimming and then you ran into transition so it did take me some time to get settled into the swim um probably like three quarters of the way through the first lap I finally was like okay like I've got my position I'm feeling good my breathing's in control then I did my second lap and I was totally fine I was swimming by myself literally the whole time um and a decent swim time I think it was 20 minutes and change around there so I was really happy with that good solid swim for me um t1 I felt like a hot mess <laughs> um, the mountain bike's a little different I'm used to my tri bike where my hydration's on there my nutrition's on there there's not much for me to do um where that's not necessarily the case with my mountain bike and you know I was wearing a camelback for my hydration so I had to put that on but then I had to find like another spot for my gels because they weren't easily accessible anywhere. So I put them down my bra. It worked. Um, I kind of made a decision in that moment whether I wanted to wear gloves or not. My hands were wet. I was fumbling around so much. I was like, forget the gloves. I'll be fine. It's 24 miles. I'll be all right. Um, it ended up more or less being fine. I did have a little blister like it's, you can't see it anymore, but it's kind of like on the side of my hand, but it didn't affect my riding or anything. Um, this was a race. They said you could do a mountain bike or gravel bike and they had, it was kind of like a multi-event weekend. There was trail running, triathlon, gravel bike riding. Um, so I opted for a mountain bike because I didn't want to be underbiked. And again, I wanted to test that fit of the mountain bike. I am very glad I opted for the mountain bike. So there were some pavement sections and some kind of like open, um, sections of like just kind of like open trail think of like your airline hop river trail but wider um kind of like access road type trails that were easy but then there was some really techie stuff that I was glad I had the mountain bike and descending I was super glad you know I had no concerns descending whereas folks on gravel bikes yeah they were faster in other sections but then they had to be super careful descending so I did the mountain bike three loop course um I felt pretty good during all of it. Um, there was one pretty steep hill in it. Um, the rest was fine. That steep hill, I got popped off like halfway up both times, you know, just hitting the rock and getting popped off the pedals. And somehow the third lap, even though I was starting to feel it, I rode up. I just guess I picked a good line and I made it to the top and I was good to go. Um, so I definitely gained a couple spots in the bike, um, but that it was kind of getting hard to tell because there was a sprint going on and then there was like these gravel events and then people were riding gravel and mountain bikes. So it was like hard to tell who was doing what. Um, but I knew in that first lap I had passed, I think, I forget now, one or two women. So I was doing all right. Um, but yeah, the course was about, I think a little over seven miles. I want to say I ended up riding like, 22 miles or so advertised as 24 again everyone's computer is reading differently um so bike you know if you know me by now you know the bike's my good part my strong part the part I'm confident in the part I love to do so the bike was great um hopped off of that and got on the trail run I am usually really good about reading pre-race stuff and I thought I was doing two loops on the trail run for whatever reason um <laughs> which it didn't really affect my race. I just, in my mind, I was doing two loops, but I carried my water and nutrition like I always do. Um, there was only an aid station on the 
run out. Um, so in T2, I picked up my transition stuff, um, got my bike away, picked up my running bottle, put my hat on, bib, all that good stuff. T2 was like totally fine. I was in and out of there. I had kind of come in on the bike with another woman um, and I flew right out of transition. She was sitting down putting her shoes on and I was out of there. Um, but I didn't need the aid station because I had my stuff. Um, some folks were depending on an aid station and I feel bad because there wasn't one on the run. It ended up being one big loop at mile like three and a half. I was like, huh, this better end soon. Like I really wasn't prepared to run over a 10k with my nutrition. Um, and then I ran up to someone on the trail. I was like, is this one loop or two loops? And he's like, it's one loop. And I'm like, oh, okay. I think we're doing the same race. Are you doing the sprint? And he was doing the Olympic. And then I ran by a girl and I was like, you're doing the 10k right for the Olympic. We're just doing this one loop. And she's like, yeah. So then I was like, oh, okay. Um, the run was very quiet. I saw some people early on. And then when I was in the woods, maybe every mile or so I passed someone. Um, no one passed me on the run, but as far as trail running goes, that's not something I do very often at all. I'm not great at it. Um, that I had a great run. I knew going into this, my run fitness, like wasn't quite there. <laughs> um, I've just been doing a lot of biking and my swimming's kind of been fine, but I, in my mind, my run fitness is, is not where it will be in a month when I do a 70.3. Um, but I ended up having a great, a great trail run, you know, for not being, um, you know, in my peak run fitness for not trail running a lot. I was thrilled with my run and I was able to gain another spot on the female end. Um, and that was that we ran a little on the sand to finish another typical Xterra thing and then up on the grass. Um, and we were good to go. Um, so I think, yeah, it was a great Xterra. It's currently the only Xterra on the East coast. So if you're interested in these off-road triathlons, this is kind of it. Um, it's put on by ready, set, go adventures. They are a wow sponsor this year for their gravel ride. So they have a couple of gravel events in New Jersey, and then they're doing the Macedonia gravel grinder in Connecticut at the end of July, which I'll be at. Um, so it's a great group of folks, ready, set, go adventures. The discount code is sprinkled all over our women on wheel stuff, but if you can't find it, let me know and I can get that over to you. Um, so yeah, they're working on doing a second East Coast Xterra. It would be in Pennsylvania next year. Um, hopefully that happens because Xterra is fun. It's just we wish we had more out here. The rest of them are out west at Elevation, um, Alabama. They're just like quite far away. So yeah, if you want an early season triathlon, trying off-road, this would be the event. Um, at this event, I ended up second in my age group, fourth overall. Um, a woman named Angela Nath won overall. And some of you may know that name. She's a professional triathlete. So in actual results, she gets kind of like pulled off um, because like for USAT and stuff, you know, she's not going to count towards that. She's just getting her world's qualifier for Xterra. Um, so then I guess you could kind of say I was like unofficially third overall. And then an interesting thing happened a couple of days later. So Tuesday of the race, I got a text from the race director and he just wanted to chat. And and so I was like, hmm, I don't know what's going on, but I'll give him a call. And I called him and, and come to find out they think the woman that won my age group um, and was, I guess, then third overall, they think she shortened somehow the last um, lap of the bike. So her last bike lap was showing seven minutes slower than her previous two laps. Um, and I, he just kind of asked me where I saw her on the course. Um, and if I remember seeing her and then if she passed me at any point. And so I honestly answered his questions cause I had a pretty good memory, um, based on her, her kit and where I was in the race and things like that. Um, and so I let him know and he was going to talk to a few other folks about it. So I guess they had noticed the lap time and then someone had called and, and kind of filed a complaint, a concern. I don't know. And then he reached out to me um, since we kind of have a relationship prior to this race. And I, and I, and I was affected like directly as my result. Um, so I still haven't heard like officially. So he was saying like, you know, if this is the final conclusion, I would have won my age group um, moving up to third overall with Angela still winning. Um, or if you take her out, I kind of would have been second overall, which is, I guess, kind of cool. I don't know. I, I wasn't really there to 
get a result per se. Um, again, my goals were doing an early season triathlon before 70.3s, testing out that mountain bike fit, doing some transitions, getting in a longer effort. You know, it was a three and a half hour effort for me. Um, whereas the 70.3s are going to be a little over five hour efforts. Like that was more my goal of this race. Um, but it's always nice when a good result comes with it. And I was happy with fourth overall and second age group, but it's just kind of the story. I mean, it just goes to show you stuff happens in racing and, and, you know, we got to be honest as we can and, and paying attention to our competitors and, um, just a story to note something interesting that happened to me and something that's never really happened to me before. But anyways, it was a great day. My body felt, felt good. I was happy with it. Um, and yeah, it's been a, a week since that event and I'm just kind of um, putting my head down and grinding now until we get to Western Mass 70.3, which June 11th, I think is the date. Um, I was able to ride that course um, yesterday with a friend. Uh, I'm really looking forward to having a close, you know, Ironman Sanction 70.3 um, and, and seeing what I can do out there. Um, so that's what I've got for Rasputitsa and Xterra, New Jersey. Um, hope you guys can and take a listen um, and maybe consider these events for next year. Again, I would highly recommend both and we'll probably consider going back to both. Um, you know, obviously I have to see how what next year brings, but, you know, two events I would for sure um, return to. If you've got any questions, as always, reach out to me. More than happy to answer specific questions you have um, about the events or anything related to that so thanks for listening um and we will catch up soon women on wheels